Now we mentioned that you can use MLT to do sharpening and you can do it at any specific layer you want. And the way you do this is to select the layer you might want to sharpen. And then uh, when we come down here to the detail layer, expand that, and you'll see a bias knob. A bias is a multiplicative factor that is applied towards a specific layer relative to the other layers when the in, all the layers are combined to form the image. So um, when you increase the bias, you're basically weighting that particular uh, set of scale detail higher than the others, and it'll be amplified when the image is recombined. If you come in with a bias of zero, it's saying don't amplify it at all, don't change everything. But you can change this to go up, and as you go up, having values as high as two and four is not really that uncommon. Uh, just keep in mind that as you're doing that, you're sharpening everything in that particular detail layer. You're sharpening signal, but you're also sharpening noise. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit later because here is an opportunity to improve the results by not only picking which layer is uh, best to apply the sharpening to, but also to have a mask that is protecting uh, low signal areas from sharpening. You don't want to sharpen uh, the noise, so you want to make sure that the focus is on the higher signal level areas in the image. Now, a pretty typical sharpening scheme might look something like this, where we've gone in and we don't want to sharpen the first layer, that's mostly noise, but we do want to start sharpening where some of the fine detail can come into play here. Um, and if we were to take this particular image, let's zoom in a little bit so we can see you know, the area that we're going to be impacting when we talk about sharpening. Let's get in here a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we can take this particular uh, plan, which is basically focusing on layers two, three, and four, and easing up as we go on higher scale, and we can just apply that to the image. Now we can go back and forth and see what happens. This is after the sharpening has been done. Let's go back to where we were. You can see that it's a little bit softer and we're bringing out a little bit more detail. Hope this comes through the video. <laughs> um, you can sharpen this a lot more. I tend to hit sharpening with a very light touch. Um, while two to four is, for a bias is not unusual, uh, it's rare that I go um, you know, below, uh, above one. So I like to have a very soft hand on that. But that gives you a little bit of feel for what happens when you're talking about doing sharpening. How about doing noise reduction? How does that happen? Let's reset this. Go back up to eight. Okay, just like we had a bias, which is acting to sharpen things, we have a noise reduction set of parameters we can work with in here. When these are engaged, you have three parameters that you can set, a threshold, an amount, and iterations. The threshold is a sigma unit uh, that basically below that threshold, attenuation will occur. So if you're dealing with layer one, it's not unusual to have a threshold of somewhere between three and five sigma. Um, as you go up in scale, you'll want to reduce the sigma because uh, you're getting into areas which are not noise any longer. And so you're going to want to have a much softer uh, hand on that. The amount is basically a, a multiplier of zero to one. It basically, just like in a lot of um, tools in PixInsight, the amount it allows you to pull back from the full effect of what you're dealing with. And that's just an easy way to sort of scale the operations in here. Iterations means that you can do this operation once on this particular layer, or you could do it many times. And by changing the iterations, you can hit things much harder on a particular layer. And so the strategy is to come in here and for each of the layers where you think you're going to find noise, uh, set a set of parameters up that would uh, likely um, mitigate the noise in those regions. Here is a pretty typical noise reduction scheme. In this case, we're running some kind of noise reduction operation on the first five layers. We're starting with the first layer with a sigma of five, which is pretty high level, an amount of 0.5, and we're running that twice. Uh, as we go to the next layer, we're dropping to a sigma three, to 2.5, to 1.5, 
and a 0 0.5. So we're sort of feathering out the operation, if you will, as we get into the higher orders. Um, the amount is about half because in this case we're doing two iterations. Um, and as we go down, we're also feathering that down as well. So we can take this kind of a scheme, and of course you can modify this and play with this, but this is one that uh, I've often used in the past, and uh, we can see what that does when we work on an image. So let's go back to our unsharpened image. Let's zoom in a little bit more so we can really see some of the noise that we're getting in there, and let's try dragging this over. All right, now we're done. We're going to toggle back and forth so you can see the difference here. You see in here, there's quite a bit of noise still in the image, but as we apply the noise reduction, that's been smoothed out quite a bit. In this particular case, we're not using a mask, so we're applying things to the layer as it is. Uh, one could easily see that with a mask, we could uh, use it to protect high signal areas where we don't want anything going on and expose and focus on the low signal areas where noise is most likely to live. So my common practice is to always use a mask anytime I'm doing noise reduction with MLT or anytime I'm doing sharpening with MLT. And we have other two minute tutorials describing how you can make um, uh, a luminance mask, which is a really good tool for that, that basically puts the focus on where you want sharpening or noise reduction and protects the other areas where you don't want to touch that. I should point out that the MLT tool does uh, allow for the creation and use of a linear mask, and that's something that you can engage, you can use the preview, you can adjust these parameters to get the mask to cover just the areas you want, and then when it's applied, it will do that. Personally, I tend to like to create my masks uh, and apply them to the image myself, and therefore I don't often use this particular feature, but I know a lot of people do use it and like the convenience of having it there, so I do want to point that out. So here is a brief example of how you can use MLT to do some level of image analysis, even though there's some limitations to that, a few workarounds for that, um, and finally how you can begin to use it to do operations at the layer level, whether you're uh, extracting layers or a layer uh, or eliminating a layer or doing noise reduction or sharpening.